DJ Williams was a highly sought after player. He chose the Arkansas Razorbacks over the OSU Cowboys. And then his senior season at Arkansas, DJ Williams was awesome. He won the Mackey Award for the best tight end in the country. He also won the Disney Spirit Award, which is given to the most inspirational player in college football. If you don't know his story about why he is inspirational, here's our downtown conversation with Arkansas Razorback, DJ Williams. You look at DJ Williams now. Yeah. Um, pretty successful guy. Tried to be. Um, you're a television host. Mm -hmm. You host newscasts. You're a very successful real estate agent. But let's go back to your time in Texas, before you were even a teenager. Mm -hmm. Domestic violence hit your family. Um, it, it was a difficult time growing up. Yes, uh, difficult in a big way now that I'm sitting where I am today. But back sure. then, you know, it, it was very hard for me to see that anything was drastically wrong because that's just all I knew. Mm -hmm. um, it was my normal. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my father uh, did not treat my mom good at all he's very abusive and uh, what people really don't know about domestic violence is yes what's very hard to see is the physical abuse which i saw a lot uh, but the physical or the the verbal attacks mm -hmm. as well and the mental abuse is just as bad you know and um seeing my mom who is a superhero one of the greatest people the greatest person i know have to go through that even at a young age when i was still trying to figure out the difference between right and wrong and most people would say, you know, that's the role of a father to teach his son how to be a man and what is right and wrong. Even then, at that age, I knew that wasn't right. Right versus wrong for your family, you and I, again, are close. We know each other. Your 11th birthday was kind of that moment where right versus wrong became crystal clear. Yeah, for, for me, uh, I would say also, too, more for my mom, because um, it was my birthday. Dad took me out fishing. And... Um, he was very just nonchalant about how things would go down and what would happen. I remember him stopping at a gas station, uh, what was later than I found out, purchasing some drugs or, you know, of that sort of nature, but leaving me in the car and setting a pistol in my lap and just saying, if anybody comes to the car, just shoot them. Like, 11 years old. Yeah, and it, even then, I'm just processing then, like, okay, Dad, I'm used to this. Uh, few times that would happen even at the house when he would leave anybody comes shoot and just that was a norm but in that moment just knowing that I never really had a place where I would go to school and see other people talk about home and family and dad I just had no idea what that yeah. was like and I said is this going to be the rest of my life I could just take this gun pull the trigger on myself and not have to worry about the rest of it and I remember just that thought just crossing my head and then quickly just saying you know no but telling my mom about that story, and that was the trigger for her that started this whole path to where you and I are sitting here today. Very interesting path that it led us down. Do you remember that date when your mom said, we've got to leave this situation? Oh, man. Do to I go remember somewhere that? else. And when you put your finger on a city yep. in the middle of Arkansas, and you guys left that night with mm -hmm. only the clothes on your back. Yeah, do I remember the, I don't remember the exact date, but I remember the day. I remember exactly what I was doing. I was mid-bubble bath. Uh, I was in there for hours, you know, when your fingers get pruned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to run the water again, keep it hot. I had a big battle going on with one Power Ranger and some knockoff thing. Huge scene going on. My sister bust in. And I'm like, what is happening? She said, you got to go. I was like, I need about 15 more minutes. So I had a whole storyline. We got to get to the finish. She says, David, that's what they call me. We need to go. And I could see in the sense of urgency in my sister's face at an age of 11 years old that this is it. I knew exactly what was happening without her even saying a word. Got out of the bath, put on the clothes that we had. I saw my mom was home with some random guy. I didn't know who he was. Uh, we just hopped in the car and we went to the closest women's shelter. And then, um, cause we went that day, cause the night before my dad didn't come home. Usually when he doesn't come home, when he shows up, Something bad happened, he's angry, um, and he would always take it out on my mom. So we knew it was time to get out of there. And it was just making that choice to get up and move her in a shelter, trying to figure out what happened. We heard my dad get high and drunk at his dad's house. He talked about breaking the cycle. Mm -hmm. um, he was with his dad getting high and drunk, got into an altercation, um, ended up shooting someone. You know, he was wanted for attempted murder. 
and he was hiding out, hiding from the police. They ended up finding him. He's in a high-speed chase with the police officers in the interstates of Dallas, Texas, to the point where they had to throw the spikes out. He got in a shootout with the officers on the interstate. They shot him, um, went to the hospital. Uh, he didn't die, sentenced to 26 years in prison. And so I'm over here, you know, we're like, whoa. And so we finally get at a point where we just wanted a fresh start. And before he was sentenced, we weren't sure what was going on. We wanted somewhere safe. My mom brings me in there with the counselor and says, son, where are we going? Pulls out a map of the United States. I'm young. I don't know what's happening. I just put my finger on it. And they said, okay. I was like, okay. And then I go on about my business. And my finger landed in Little Rock, Arkansas. And that's where we moved. And I joke all the time saying if I would have known the significance of where I would put my finger, like we could have been in San Diego, you know, we could have been in Miami, you know, all these other cool places. But your places. life probably wasn't would, gonna be. That's right, but then it goes back to thinking, now it's supposed to be in Little Rock, Arkansas. Obviously, the one person who was the cornerstone of it all um, was my mom, and I wish she was here, because as much as I talk about this, people look at my incredible story, it's nothing compared to what she did and what she is still currently doing now. So if she's saying this, Mom, I love you, you're a rock star, and uh, the best person I know. Mama Vicky is a legend. Yes, yeah, she is, right? It, your gift is much bigger than football. Mm -hmm. It also extends to that impact that you made. Mm -hmm. When did you realize that? I mean, you were the Mackey Award winning, the best tight end in the country your senior year. You won the Disney Spirit Award. You were drafted by the Green Bay Packers. You had that talent. But at some point, you had to realize that you can do just as much away from the field mm -hmm. because of your experience. The news job was the first time ever I tried to do something professionally um, where I couldn't see other people do it first and learn from them. Um, football, it's easy. You look at the best. What are they doing right? I can work on these things and then kind of make it my own. Um, if you do that in the news, try to act like someone else, people are like, what's wrong with that person? It's not genuine at all. So I was just like, I have to just try to be myself and see what happens. But after I was me, and just to see that it was well received mm -hmm. by the viewers and the public, and they wanted more and they wanted more, and I was just like, man, me just being DJ is enough. And I have all of this stuff that I gained from sports and doing things the right way as a huge platform to boost this voice of mine and make sure that I can do my part of helping people out in the situation I am. And it doesn't have to just be domestic violence. People deal with their struggles everywhere. But it's about, you know, when you finally get out of that, how are you gonna give back to the community, make that difference? And for me, even, it's still happening every day. You talked about that shelter I went to. I went there around Christmas time and I was kind of looking at all these different aspects and I saw some problems. I was like, dang, I wish that toilet would work. Man, that mm -hmm. washing machine isn't happening. And I was like, they only got one shower. I started seeing all these things and I was just like, I talk about it, what am I doing about it? So I had conversations with the right people and now I'm on the board. So now I can finally start making decisions that are gonna impact people and hopefully boost them um, to give them opportunity to be the next DJ, I would say. Yeah. It'd be pretty cool. Right. DJ Williams, hey, my man. friend, thank you. Good to see you, Appreciate thanks, you. thanks.